Today, I'm gonna help you find the best class for you. So I'm gonna be breaking down all of the classes in Blue Protocol. It's important to note that you may think that all of these classes look like your stereotypical cookie cutter MMO classes, but each class is gonna have a unique mechanic that's gonna change the way that that class plays entirely. But to open up, we're gonna start with the Spellweaver. And now it's been stated by the devs that Spellweaver is gonna be the hardest class to master, but once you do, you're gonna be dealing insane amounts of damage. Now, I believe the reason they stated that Spellweaver is gonna be the hardest class is because in order to effectively play this class, you're gonna have to manipulate the elemental burst system. I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but if you're not familiar, I dive deeper to it in this video that you can check out here. Now let's get into the unique things we know about the Spellweaver class. Majority of their skills are gonna be able to be charged to do increased amounts of damage, as well as additional buffs and debuffs if you charge them to the max level you're gonna have a mana gauge which you're gonna be responsible for managing because this mana gauge isn't gonna regenerate automatically like we see in other mmos you're gonna have to use your different abilities which we're gonna discuss later so that way you can constantly be cycling mana into that gauge but with that is where the insane burst potential comes with the spell weaver because about 75 percent of your skills have no cooldown like that's insane you can continuously use them but once you run out of mana, you add a mana. So like, it's one of those things that's gonna be a love and hate relationship because if you go spamming those abilities, you're gonna be in a real tight situation. Now let's go ahead and get into the skills. And for our left click, we have Trinity Shot, which is gonna be our chain auto attack. And doing this is gonna restore mana. And then with the right click, we're gonna be able to do an ability that regenerates our mana. Those are gonna be the left and the right click. Now let's move into the tactical skills. So we're gonna start with the first skill, Fire Blast. And this is a pretty basic skill. It's gonna consume mana to shoot a fireball, which can be charged up to three different levels. And the more you charge it, the more damage it's gonna do. But the next skill we have is gonna be Flame Grenade. And this is gonna send a fireball, which explodes when it touches the enemy and it can also be charged. Another skill you'll have to choose from is gonna be called lightning. And like it sounds, it's gonna shoot lightning bolts, which can be charged. The more you charge it, the more lightning you're gonna be able to shoot out. And at max charge, you're gonna get a time reduction buff to all of your skills. So this is gonna be one of those skills that you're gonna wanna save and maximum charge it. So that way you can take advantage of that time reduction buff. The next skill is gonna be thunder mine and that's gonna summon a lightning mine that's gonna follow the enemy and if it hits it's gonna cause an explosion and it can be charged to increase the number of thunder mines that come out blizzard is the next skill we're gonna take a look at and this is a chargeable snowstorm that when you place it on the area anyone walking into that area is gonna be slowed down and take ticking damage and the longer you charge this is going to increase the size of that snowstorm bridget crash is the next skill and this is going to allow you to have different icebergs come from the sky and the longer you charge it the more icebergs that are gonna come and the more damage it's gonna deal. The next skill is gonna be concentration. And I feel like this is gonna be a must and a staple for the Spellweaver kit. And this is just gonna regenerate mana temporarily. And I feel like you're gonna be popping this one on cooldown. Simple skill, so we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. And we're gonna move into the next ability, which is gonna be follow bullet. This is gonna summon two crystals around you. And depending on which skill you use from the other abilities, it's going to affect the element that's sent out. So here we can see that it's sending out fire bolts because likely a fire elemental ability was used and then lastly we have the ult which is going to be meteor inferno and it's going to send a meteor coming from the sky and since it's an ult obviously it's going to deal massive amounts of damage my opinion on spell weaver is that it's going to be one of those classes where you're really going to have to work to manipulate the elemental burst system and on top of that you're going to have to be managing how much mana you have because it's not constantly regenerating so you're going to have to make sure that you're actively doing abilities to make sure that that mana pool is in a constant flow and on top of all of that you're a ranged dps so you're gonna have to be focusing on spacing to make sure that you're not getting overwhelmed with mobs because i imagine this class is going to be extremely squishy with the amount of damage it's going to be able to outburst likely making it a glass cannon if 
if you haven't already, make sure you're smashing that subscribe button and like in the video. If you're gonna be playing Blue Protocol, this is the place to be because I'm gonna be covering all of the news in depth and I'll make sure to keep you updated, but let's get back to the video. The next class we're gonna talk about is gonna be the Blade Warden. Now this class has changed significantly since the earlier closed beta testing, especially with the introduction of the aggro system. In the past, that wasn't a thing, but now that it's in the game, our Blade Warden is gonna be the closest thing we have to a tank that we see in other MMORPGs. You're gonna have different types of abilities that you can slot in. Some are gonna be more geared towards offensive focus and others are gonna be more defensive focus. The big class specific thing that the Blade Warden has to focus on is gonna be managing its shield gauge. You can see this on the left side of your character and that shield gauge is gonna be used to block incoming attacks and it's gonna deplete as you take more damage and regenerate while you're not blocking. If the shield gauge hits zero, it's gonna break and you're not gonna be able to use it for a few seconds as it recovers. We have our left click ability, which is gonna be break slash, and that's gonna be our chain attack with the fourth attack dealing extra damage and applying a damage reduction buff on the enemy. Our right click is gonna be shield guard, and the right click is what you're gonna use to use that shield gauge and block incoming attacks. And like I said, you're gonna wanna manage this to make sure that it doesn't hit zero. You're also gonna be able to activate a counter from the shield guard. So if you're holding right click, that's gonna start the guard and if you hit left click while guarding that's going to activate the counter to where if you're hit you're going to strike back those are going to be the left and the right click now let's move into the tactical skills the first one that we're going to discuss is going to be shield charge as this skill describes it's going to be using your shield to charge in front hitting enemies in front of you and stunning them upon hit but you cannot use this from your shield or guard state the next ability we have is going to be sunrise charge this is going to rush to your enemies with your shield dealing lights amount of damage but it's going to be able to be charged from level one to level two and depending on how far you charge that skill will change the second portion of the ability if you go to level two it's going to trigger a second combo but if you go all the way to level three it's going to do a third combo and put a holy debuff on the opponent Blowbeat is the next skill we have on our list and this is going to be an aoe circular shockwave attack around you and enemies hit are going to be taunted celestial pillar is the next ability and this is going to summon a light pillar which is going to continuously have ticking light damage to enemies within the range of that pillar the next skill that the blade warden has is going to be divine slash and this is going to be an attack that sends out a slash wave directly in front of you. Crescent Light is going to be the next ability, and we can see that the slash right here is going to deal light damage, but if you charge it, it's going to have two slashes instead of one. Regeneration is the next skill, and that's going to be a passive ability that's continuously giving you HP back, so I believe you have to activate it, and then it goes on cooldown, and as it's activated, it's going to tick and regenerate your HP. Fortress is going to be the final ability we're going to discuss, and that's going to give you a buff to yourself that's going to increase your defense and give you other buffs for a fixed amount of time and lastly we have your ultimate skill which is going to be judgment shield this has been reworked since the earlier closed beta and it's going to increase your defense give you super armor and hp regen and then you'll have a bar that appears on the right side once you fill up this bar after attacking you're going to be able to activate it again and this is going to give the buff to your allies as well and I believe once you activate that ult, it's gonna reset your shield gauge all the way to max. So that way you can use it at the right time to make sure you're getting the most effectiveness and use out of your shield gauge. Another unique thing that the Blade Warden is gonna be able to take advantage of is the enemy step jump. And if you jump while you're approaching enemies, it's going to allow you to kind of do a double jump and from that, you can do an attack in the air that's called an assault attack. And for the Blade Warden, the unique buff that this is gonna give is gonna be a bind to the enemy. And I believe that's just going to increase the aggro and make them attack you. Now, keep in mind that Blade Warden was one of the first classes. So a lot of these could be subject to change. With the latest live stream, we've seen a few new skills such as this one, where it looks like they just have like a perfect immunity block. And this skill right here, where it looks like they're making an AOE effect that anyone in this area is getting damage reduction. I also haven't seen a lot of mentions of Crescent Slash since the beta. So I don't know if maybe that got scrapped for one of these skills. So with the Blade Warden, you're gonna be managing a lot of different things when it comes to that shield gauge and making sure that you're protecting your allies. But I think this class is gonna be 
very popular and very crucial to the success of parties when you're fighting big raid bosses because we had that just like that beefy person to get in there and soak up the damage. Now that we've discussed the Blade Warden, let's move into the Keen Strider. Now this is the weirdest name out of all of them. Like what is the Keen Strider and what does it have to do with an archer? But regardless, let's dive into the things that makes the Keen Strider unique. Keen Strider is gonna play unique to most archer classes and other MMOs because the devs have been heavily stating that this is gonna be more of a support focused class. There's also gonna be a class specific mechanic called weak point. And if you hit your opponent in the weak point, you're gonna deal increased damage. And this is signified by these blue numbers here, but they've stated that the weak point is gonna change based on the enemy. For a lot of them, it'll be the head. But if you're planning to go a DPS version, it's gonna be important that you focus on learning the weak points of the different mobs. And then this last hill mechanic was an adjustment they made since the earlier closed betas, where they've changed your right click from being a DPS combo with your left click to a heal mechanic. So over your HP meter, you'll see this gauge constantly filling up as you do damage. And from level one to three will affect how much of a heal that this does, but you'll just hit your right click to launch that heal in the area that's gonna be able to heal you as well as your teammates. So that special mechanic is gonna cover the right click for the left click, we have your chain auto attack that can be casted while moving. And then that last shot is gonna fire multiple arrows at your enemy. But now let's move into the abilities. First, we have charged arrow, and this is gonna be able to obviously be charged for increased amounts of damage. But if you hit a weak spot on your opponent, you're gonna deal increased damage, and it's gonna have a knockback effect if you charge the arrow. The next ability we have is Hypnoblast. This is gonna shoot an arrow at your opponents and put them to sleep. And it's not gonna be limited to just one opponent. I believe that this hits multiple people then it's gonna put both of them to sleep. Following that ability, we have negative renaissance. This is gonna shoot an arrow straight, and if it hits an enemy, they're gonna get a negative debuff applied, and then enemies that come in close proximity to that are gonna get the debuff applied to them as well. The next ability that Keen Strider has is gonna be lethal shower. You're gonna shoot arrows into the air, and it's gonna damage all enemies that are in the circular area of the ground that it lands. The more you charge this ability, the more that circular area grows. The subsequent ability we have is going to be Dusk Force, and this is just going to shoot an arrow at the ground that's going to cause an AoE slow for all enemies going through it, as well as doing tick damage over time. The next ability is going to be Healing Arrow. Now, this is going to be an AoE heal arrow that's going to be able to be used to heal your teammates and yourself. Now, I believe this can be charged, but I don't know if the charge affects the amount of healing or just increases the circular area of the heal. The following skill is going to be Hunter Spirit, and as a support archer, I think this is going to be significant to be popping on cooldown but this is going to launch a cooldown <laughs> popping on cooldown and then if, okay you guys don't get it yet but this is gonna launch a cooldown reduction buff on yourself as well as your party and this has a 10 second cooldown. So this seems like it's gonna be something that can be spammed. For the ultimate of the Keen Strider, we have Mortal Gravity. This is gonna fire an arrow that's gonna have a gravitational pull that's gonna CC and pull all enemies that are hit by this area to the center of the circle. My opinion of the Keen Strider is that based on the developer comments, they are trying to shift this class to be more support and group party focus, as opposed to the stereotypical archer that we see that's mainly big damage, big DPS. I believe the buffs and debuff that the Keen Strider is going to add to a party is going to be unmatched when it comes to support, but it's important to note that this class was going to be designed to be a support first with the option to be a DPS and not vice versa, so that way you know that going into playing the Keen Strider. Now let's talk about the Twin Striker. So the Twin Striker is going to play similar to a Berserker and other MMOs where you're going to be focusing on doing non-stop damage because you have several abilities with the Drain Effect, which is going to give you life still for doing damage. So essentially, if you want to stay alive, you got to be going hard in the paint 24 seven. But the class specific mechanic for the twin striker is going to be the combo meter. As long as you keep your combos going alive, that gauge is going to increase all the way up to 130%. And that's going to allow you to do bonus DPS. They've also introduced a party combo meter. And so it's going to be the twin strikers responsibility as well for trying to keep that party combo meter going since they're already going to be doing it for their 
class specific mechanic. So for the left click, we have B swing, and this is something that's gonna vary based on the directional input that you place when you put in the attack. So there's a forward variation, a sideways variation, and a backwards variation. And then for the right click, we have Axe Tornado. This was actually altered since the last closed beta to give you life steal when you do it. So this is gonna be another one of those abilities that regenerate your HP. Now let's move into the tactical skills. The first skill we have is gonna be Brutal Blow, and this is gonna launch a rotating slash in an area in front of you, and this can be charged for increased damage. The next ability we have is gonna be Crimson Blow, and this is gonna launch a fire spinning attack that can be charged up to three times. The subsequent ability we have is gonna be Fall Impact. With this ability, you're gonna jump into the air and leap forward, damaging all enemies in the area that you land when you hit the ground. The next ability is gonna be Lava Impact, which is gonna work similar to Fall Impact, where you jump into the air and you smash your axes on the ground, but this is gonna leave a big AOE fire on the ground that's gonna deal ticking damage to anyone around you. This can be used up to three times in a row, and it's also gonna be a fire type elemental attack. The following ability is going to be Storm Rush, and this is going to be two side-by-side -side attacks in a wide area in front of you. The following skill is going to be Burning Rush, and this is going to be a constant flow of slashes in front of you that are going to have the fire element attached to them, and the longer you charge it, increases the number of slashes that are thrown in front of you. The last two skills we have are going to be buffs, and so the first skill is going to be Blood Axe, and this is going to allow you to absorb HP when you inflict damage to your opponent. So this is going to be your lifestyle ability that's going to be keeping you alive. And then the other buff skill is going to be War Cry. And this is going to grant super armor for a fixed amount of time. So you won't be staggered when you hit enemies in this state. But I did see a similar skill in the latest live stream that has a similar icon. Except I think the effect is going to be that when you activate this skill, you can sacrifice a portion of your combo gauge to deal increased damage with your other abilities. And so I don't know if that skill replaced Warcry, but we do know that that's a new skill that we've seen with the latest gameplay. And then the ultimate skill for the Twin Striker, we have Vortex Impact. So this is going to be a skill where you run towards the enemies, you launch them in the air, and then you also do a combo attack, smashing them back into the ground. My opinion on the Twin Striker class is that I feel like this is going to be the easiest class to be able to spot a good Twin Striker and a bad Twin Striker. Depending on how you manage that combo meter is going to be very significant because this is going to control the amount of DPS you're doing, which the more DPS you're going to do, the more that your life stealing abilities are going to grant back that HP. And so if you're not managing this effectively, you're not going to be regenerating HP effectively, which means that you're going to be dying frequently. Based on the changes since the last closed betas, it looks like they're trying to give them more life steal abilities. We see that they added drain to the right click. And so maybe they're trying to do that to give more options and make it less of a skill gap difference. And lastly, let's discuss the newest class, the Foe Breaker. The Foe Breaker is the latest class, and at the time of this recording, none of the skills have been translated, but we do have information from the latest dev streams, and that's what we're going to be discussing. The Foe Breaker is going to play as a hybrid tank, and the unique mechanic to the Foe Breaker is going to be the cartridge system. Now, the way that this works is that in order to perform your tactical skills, you're going to have to use a set amount of cartridges. At any time, you're going to be able to reload your cartridge but reloading at zero is going to give you an additional two cartridges once you fully reload. They've also stated that you're going to have different buffs and effects while reloading as a part of your skills. Now we're going to take a look at the skill preview they uploaded to the website. As I mentioned earlier, none of these skills have been translated yet, so I'm just going to take a look and make assumptions based on what I'm seeing. This skill appears to shoot a ball out and stagger your opponent and kind of suck them closer towards you. This is likely going to be some type of CC to stop mobs from attacking the other members in your party and bring them towards you. This next ability just looks like a hard AOE CC and knockdown for any enemies that are hit within that vicinity under you. Now they did mention that this class is going to have an ability that's going to grant you super armor and that looks to be what this one is, which is likely just going to be a massive buff to your defense to make you able to tank damage without being CC'd or knocked down. This ability looks to be the range part of the kit where it looks like you're charging up a blast to shoot it at the enemy, so this is likely going to be one of the full breakers projectile abilities. This ability looks like they're just creating a big circle of dust tornadoes, and I wonder if 
this ability is going to knock your opponents into the air is another form of CC. Now from the limited information we have on Foebreaker, I feel like it's obvious that they're looking to make this class sort of a hybrid tank. So it seems like it's not gonna be like, I'm gonna sit here and be the main tank. It's gonna be more of a, I'm responsible for protecting the party and making sure none of the mobs make it towards our squishy DPS. You're gonna have to manage these cartridges, which I feel like is why the class plays so slow because you're gonna be focused on doing the math to use the right amount of cartridges for the ability and reloading at the right time while you protect your party. Now, obviously all of my opinions are speculation based on the skills we have for the closed beta. As we get closer to the launch of Blue Protocol, I'll be making another video once everything is finalized. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you're subscribing to the channel and stay in tune for that. That's gonna be my breakdown for all of the Blue Protocol classes. If you're looking for something else to watch, I'll have a video right here that serves as a new player guide to get you caught up on all the basics.